everyone, it's Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay! I teach you tutorials on how to do the makeup, how to make the outfit so you can become the character of your dreams. You can see that I'm still in my cosplay. I didn't want to get out of it. It's so comfortable. I almost broke this. Oops. I, today, am showing you how to make my pristine KDA Akali cosplay. This has been in the making for a long time and I can tell you why. Because... I don't know, I <laughs> actually I have to make the outfit so you know there's a lot of things that I wanted to do for this outfit and one of them is show you how to embroider. That's going to be its own separate video for this one. I'm going to show you how I did the back piece. There's a lot of trial and error with this cosplay and I learned so much from it. It took me about two whole weeks just to get the patch done and there was a lot of just downtime on it because I just got so frustrated that I just wanted to throw it away. But that's beyond the point. So this video is going to be a little bit long. I don't want it to get too long, so we're going to keep the intro short. Make sure to subscribe to never miss out on any future cosplay content. Leave me a comment down below which costume you want to see in the future. Let's get started in that tutorial. Life is like an anime, wouldn't you say? The first thing that I'm going to show you how to make are the gem pieces. This includes the belt buckle, the bracelets, and sort of the hair piece that you don't see unless you see the in-game reference. This is going to be exactly like how I created the gems for Prestige Evelyn. So if you have seen that video, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Cut out a diamond roughly the size that you want for your wrist. This is going to be around 2 inches for myself. For you, it might be a little bit different, maybe smaller or larger. I use hot glue down the center and then fold it onto itself and then open it back up. This is going to create a nice edge. So then we're going to do that down the other way. I don't know what that is, but essentially you're going to just make a box and then fold it diagonally each side with hot glue in the center and open it so you get a nice crease. Cut out a diamond that's slightly larger than the first diamond. Then glue the first diamond onto the second diamond. Now I'm using nail polish to paint these gems. You can use something else, but remember to prime it first. When I use nail polish, the polish actually acts as a primer and a paint and make sure you have a very well ventilated area. For my gems, I'm going to be using purple for the base and then for highlights, I'm going to be using blue. For the gold pieces, I'm using gold lame. I've used this in all of my KDA videos. This is no exception. So I'm going to be cutting out two inch strips for each area. This means that I'm going to be cutting out strips to go around the gems, around my wrist, and around my waist as a belt. After cutting the strips, I sewed them into a tube. When sewing lame, make sure you have a stretch needle. Using my loop turner, I'm going to shove the tube onto it and then flip it inside out. I'm going to attach one of the strips around the gem carefully. I want to hide the back area of the foam gem. So glue down the fabric tube on the front and wrap it around to the back glue it down again so it's nice and secure. Do this for the entire perimeter of all of the gems. I first added hot glue to the gem backing, then the fabric tube. Measure your wrist and add a few inches for velcro closure. Cut off the excess. Hot glue the velcro on. I repeated this one more time for the other wrist cuff and then I made a really long fabric tube for my waistband, for the belt, and for the hair piece. Instead of using a band, I just decided to use a hairpin. For the heart on the back pouch, I did the same thing with a paper cutout. I used leftover foam and painted it and glued it together. The next piece I'm working on is the back booty pouch. It has a bit of detailing just like the regular KDA skin. I created a paper mock-up to get the size I wanted before using the final materials. Once I was happy with the design, I cut out the final mock-up from the gold lame foam, and white pleather. You might recognize this white pleather from my Hestia cosplay. That's because it is the same white pleather. I sew half of the pouch together. I'm doing this so I can sew the foam in before I close it up. If I were to do that, that'd be impossible and I would have to seam rip everything. Trust me, I know from experience. So have it have about halfway open and glued down the foam first. Gluing down the foam first will help you keep it stable so it does not shift when sewing. What we wanna do is make these diagonal lines from the bottom close to where we're going to have the top flap close. So do two on each side. If you have the skills and patience, go ahead and repeat this all around the bag. For me, since it's going to be close to my body, I decided to only do it on the front part. 
Now sew your entire pouch closed and keep an opening for the top. My top has an opening and closes with the flap. So now we're just gonna glue the flap down. I decided to glue the flap because it is pleather. If I had too many mistakes, there'd be too many holes. Cut a strip of gold fabric to go down the center of the bag. I glued mine in place, but you can sew it. Me, personally, I didn't like how it looked when it was sewn down. After it's glued down, go ahead and find the center point for where your heart's going to go and glue that. When you're happy with that, cut off the rest of the bottom gold piece and leave the rest of the white piece. There's a huge difference with this. I thought the stripe went all the way down. It does not. I'm going to glue down a strip of fabric on the back to let the belt slide through the pouch. The belt is not going to be able to hold this up. So I'm going to add suspender clips on the side to help it stay on my pants. And the next piece that we are going to be working on is the shirt. The shirt is going to be stretchy and I'm going to be using this very nice polyester knit fabric. If you have a basic turtleneck, go ahead and use that and cut it up. It's so much easier than making this. You wanna measure your highest point of your shoulder all the way down to the lowest point of where you want your shirt to end. This is going to be very important for how long your shirt is going to be. For me, mine will be 14 and a half inches. Make sure you know which way your fabric stretches if it's not a knit fabric. Because mine's a knit fabric, it can stretch four ways, sideways and horizontally. I'm using my bust measurement for the width of the shirt and subtracting an inch so it fits tight around my body. Then I cut out a general short shape, leaving the neckline high. If you have an existing turtleneck, you could use that as a base. Make sure to cut two of these and then sew down the sides and a little bit of the top. When sewing a knit fabric, make sure to do a zigzag stitch because you still want this to stretch out. Now I just hem the armholes and the bottom part of the shirt. Now take out your fabric. Make sure the stretchiest side is the width for the turtleneck. I cut a tight of four inches and the length of my neck plus one to create my turtleneck piece. Sew it together so it makes a nice clean band and then pin this to your neckline top and sew it together. Go ahead and try on your top and this is because we wanna see how it fits so we can find out where the keyhole cutout goes. Go ahead and mark it with something like a pin or like a marking utensil where you're going to cut this out. Fold your shirt in half, make sure it is completely flat so you don't get any nicks or bunches. And then when you are finally ready, go ahead and cut out that diamond piece for the shirt. You can be super extra and cut small flaps and sew them to the raw edges and then sew it down, kind of like bias taping. So this way the edge is not raw. Next up, let's work on the hat. The hat is a nice white baseball cap with KDA on it in gold lettering. One of the last parts of being a Kali is that she has a hat. And I know where to get one. So let's go get it. Here in the bedroom, Chris has an old hat that he absolutely never wears. So I'm just gonna take it. And now we're walking out with this hat here. So the back part's kind of see-through. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's still a white hat. I'm probably only gonna cover this front part. So let's get to it. First, I'm gonna trace out the bill on a piece of paper. I don't want to cut it out on foam just yet because I want to make sure that I have the right sizing first. Next, I'm going to cut the bill out of foam. I'm going to place it on top of the hat and then I'm going to draft the pattern for the top front piece. This is because the foam is going to add a little bit more dimension and that's because, you know, foam is thicker than fabric. I'm going to test my paper mock-up on top of the hat. This is so I make sure it fits perfectly and doesn't have any extra problems. Afterwards, I'm going to cut this template twice out of white foam. I don't really need it to be white foam, I just thought it would be easier just in case if I miss any of the painting. Once I have two pieces of the top front piece and then the other piece for the bill, I'm going to hot glue it all to the hat, solidifying it in one piece. So don't mess up because now is the time to not mess up. And if you mess up, you gotta go get a new hat and that will be just so not fun. Now just add two layers of glue on top of your foam so it will seal it before we add any of the extra details. I use school glue to seal my foam. It's a really cheap, inexpensive way to seal your foam versus just painting multiple times and letting the foam drink up all of the paint. I'm going to paint two to three coats of white acrylic paint, letting it dry in between each layer, 
And then for the final touch, I'm going to seal it again with some glue. To create the actual KDA sign, I'm going to be using a small strip of foam as a template for how thick I want it to be, and then slowly work my way around creating KDA. Now that I have the pieces all cut out, I'm going to be covering it with fabric. Make sure you have the pieces laying correctly, this way you don't get the fabric piece wrong when you're trying to get them covered. I've done this many times before, and I have another video on my channel showing you in depth how to do this. Basically, glue down your foam fabric piece and leave lots of space of fabric so it can go all the way to the back. Once you're happy with that, cut out the fabric and the foam piece. For this piece, I have multiple, so I'm going to individually section them off and then slowly cut around it and then glue the fabric to the back. Do this for all sides and all pieces. Once you have finished making your gold letters, go ahead and glue the backing and then add them to the hat. Be careful where you place these because once you put it on, you might have a little problem getting it off because you'll have hot glue residue. This is completely optional, but I'm adding a diamond to the left side of the hat. This is actually on the official Riot merchandise, not on the in-game reference or on the artwork. So I will be repeating the whole entire fabric covering foam process once again. For the last part of the hat, I used gold bias tape and hot glued it to the edge of the hat on the top and the bottom. I'm using a single fold bias tape. I'm just going to mention that I'm using an auburn wig with some layering in the bangs and it's pretty long. I didn't like the idea of spiking this wig because of the little hair piece, but you can if you want to. Just tease it a lot. Now my necklace is actually just a gold chain and I'm using the same gem for my Prestige Evelyn cosplay. Honestly, you can make the same gem again in the first part of the video where I showed you how to make the gems for all the other pieces of this cosplay. On a side note, I did have an extra pair of white gloves laying around. These gloves are not the best, but they will do because they're short gloves. For the last piece of the cosplay is making the jacket. This jacket is going to be based off of a t-shirt design. So if you have a t-shirt laying around, you can copy that for your pattern. This should not be fitted at all. You want to cut one piece on the fold of the fabric and another piece just on the fabric regularly. This will act as your front piece and the fold piece will now be your back pattern piece. Once you have your back and your front pieces cut out, go ahead and sew them together. I took a sleeve pattern piece from another pattern and I'm going to be altering this to create the sleeve itself. So what I'm going to do is cut all the way down normally, but then I'm going to cut out a little scoop section at the top where the shoulder is so I have that drop effect. These sleeves, I don't want to be tight at all. I don't want it to be super tapered at the end because it does look like it hangs versus more of a tight fitting jacket. Before sewing your sleeves closed, hem the round open part at the shoulder. It'll be much easier open than closed. Then sew your sleeves closed. Starting at the side seam, pin your sleeve seam and the side seam together and slowly work your way around the armhole opening so that your sleeve will be attached. You don't want to go too high because you left the round opening so it will fit weird. But you're supposed to let the sleeves drop just a little bit. This is up to your own comfort. Mine hangs really low and I like that. When you're done with pinning, go ahead and hem the open armhole and then sew down the sleeve at the same time. Do this for both sides. Now my front neckline wasn't the way I liked it, so I'm going to adjust it by cutting into a nice little scoop. So I pinned all the front area together and then I drew what I wanted to remove. This way I know everything will be the same and symmetrical and then all I had to do is cut it out. With some of the remaining gold fabric, I'm going to use the front edge and create a front facing. This is because when I open the jacket, I don't want it to be this ugly tan color, so I'm just going to cut a small piece to go into the front side. Not a full frontal piece, but just a side piece. This is going to be sewn together at the top, the neckline, and at the bottom. Make sure to cut two pieces, one for the left side and one for the right side. And be careful not to accidentally cut your jacket piece. I first pinned the front side down and this way it will fit perfectly and align with the bottom edge and the neckline. Next, I pinned the neckline together and then I did a top stitch on top of it. This is because the fur is going to kind of slightly cover it and it's not so visible so it's not super important that the seam is hidden. Now I'm going back over the front edge and I'm top stitching it so that the fabric will lay flat. I'm gonna do a basting stitch at the bottom of the jacket and the front facing. This is so I know that the fabric will lay flat and that the bottom hem will be even when I hem it. 
Cut off any of the excess. Go ahead and hem the bottom edge of the jacket now. I'm just doing a single fold over hem. This is the base of your jacket complete, so time to add the fur. The fur that I'm using is actually Mega Pipe Cleaners. I got these at my local craft store in the pipe cleaner aisle. They don't really have the feathers or fur that I like at that craft store, so I'm going to be using these. Go ahead and begin placing your pipe cleaner where you think you like it the best. I noticed that this design actually has the lapel open a little bit and it has kind of fur on the inside. It doesn't make sense for me, so I'm gonna place it more on the outside. So when I was happy with the layout with the pipe cleaners, I made sure to fluff my pipe cleaners first, then put some hot glue down on the jacket first. There are ways that you could sew this, but for me, I found it easier for me to hot glue it down and then place the fur pipe cleaner on top of it. I decided to glue down the front lapel to the pipe cleaner, and this is what it looks like having one pipe cleaner on each side of the jacket. I'm actually going to be cutting one of the pipe cleaners in half to go around the jacket cuffs. I did a basting stitch around the bottom of the sleeve so that way it was easier to hot glue around it. So it's the exact length that I want. Now I'm going to hot glue around the edge of the sleeve and slowly place the pipe cleaner at the bottom. Work your way all around until you are out of your pipe cleaner. Again, I'm only using half of a pipe cleaner for the sleeve edges. If you're like me and you forgot to make the buttons for the jacket, in part one, go ahead and do that now. Cut out three diamond shapes and then do that glue thing where it makes the ridges and then paint it green. Evenly space out three parts on the front part of the jacket and then mark them with pins. Cut out your diamonds and then glue them in place. The last and final step, final, final step is the embroidery of this dragon. This dragon took me forever to make and this is why. I printed out the dragon onto a piece of paper. This is not water soluble paper, it is regular paper. And then I'm going to be pinning this to the fabric. My fabric is a black polyester and it does not fray, so it's perfect for making a patch. Now I'm gonna take my time and slowly copy the entire design onto my fabric. This is basically just outlining it and tracing it versus having to print it out. I'm going to be using a black thread. Honestly, don't do that. Use a very bright color thread so you know where you're going and take your time with it. Depending on how detailed you wanna go, you can go all the way and slowly work your way around it. I ended up doing satin stitches on top of the blue lines and this is because I wanted it to stand out a little bit more than just being a normal stitch. This is going to actually be perfect for when I want to paint in the design. You can definitely copy this design all the way with your machine if you are confident enough. I didn't think about doing that until it was too late and I used nothing but black thread. After you've created your entire outline, go ahead and start removing the paper. If you had used water soluble paper, all you have to do is get it wet and then the paper will dissolve. Mine is not that, so you can see little paper bits staying inside the seams. I used a satin stitch in blue thread to go back over the wind patterns in the background. Again, because I used black thread, you should not use black thread when doing this, I could not see the outline anymore and I almost felt defeated. I can still feel it and in the camera you can pick it up, but in my eyesight, I couldn't see it. I'm going to be using gold puffy paint to fill in the dragon. I know this is not the correct color for the prestige color where it needs to be light blue, but since my clouds are already light blue, I can't go back and change it. So I decided just to paint it as gold. I decided to paint the claws white. This way I could see it and it would come out and pop just a little bit. Time to wait for it to dry. After it finished drying, I went back with the paints to make sure it stood out against the black fabric. When I'm finally done with the painting, I cut it out and then pinned it into the center back. I wanna make sure that the center back is perfect on how it should look before I sew it down. Now I slowly sew down the patch so I don't mess up using, again, black thread the right appropriate time to use black thread. This 
cosplay, I didn't modify my pants and that's because I want to still wear these pants for normal occasions. You can add the three diamonds on each side. It's very simple. You can either glue them down or sew them down. Honestly, I'd say just glue them down. There's such good glue fabrics out there. Just remember to lay them properly and position them correctly. This costume is very interesting to say the least. Um, like this gold lame really is gold. <laughs> I really like this jacket at the same time like I really wish that I could have made it le look less cheap like less costumey like this this makes me feel so disco queen I don't know why I'm so drawn to these gold costumes versus like the original one I do have a jacket for the original one I'm not going to be cutting it up I'm just going to make a patch that goes on top of it so you know not all cosplay has to be made from scratch it can be thrifted just like my pants i just want to prove a point don't underestimate the power of fuzzy mega fuzzy pipe cleaners like i've used four big puffy like like cleaners on this and it's just it just looks so much better than fur i'm so shook and it's cheaper so <laughs> yay saves me the mess I hope you guys really like this cosplay. I love this one. Honestly, I do still want to make the original KDA Akali outfit. Now that I have this one under my belt, I will be working on regular KDA Evelyn. So they will finish up my KDA videos. So no more KDA after these next two KDA costumes. So yay. <laughs> if they're already on my channel, yay. If you had a great time, make sure to click that like button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to click that red button down below to subscribe to become a member of my sewing pin cushion called YouTube. Check out some of my other videos here floating around me. <laughs> and remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye.